Twitter has slapped a lifetime ban on Milo Yiannopoulos for saying that the new Ghostbusters movie sucked and criticising one of its lead actors, Leslie Jones. According to Twitter, Milo was banned for, quote, inciting or engaging in the targeted abuse or harassment of others. This was parroted by the New York Times, who said that Jones had suffered, quote, racist and sexist remarks rallied and directed by Mr. Yiannopoulos. Time magazine said Milo was, quote, involved in a campaign of racial harassment. TechCrunch said Milo, quote, urged on a hateful mob. BuzzFeed claimed Milo, quote, incited his followers to bombard Jones with racist and demeaning tweets. Yet there's no evidence for this whatsoever. All these media outlets are brazenly lying. This provably never happened. Milo tweeted that Jones was, quote, barely literate. That's it. That's not harassment, it's a statement of fact. And it isn't proof of Milo inciting a targeted campaign of abuse against Jones. There's no proof whatsoever that Milo incited the targeted abuse or harassment of Leslie Jones, who did engage in the incitement of targeted abuse against another Twitter user. Hmm, who could it possibly be? And it was Leslie Jones. She sent out a tweet on Monday inciting her followers to target someone with whom she disagreed. Bitch, I want to tell you about yourself, but I'm gonna let everybody else do it. I'm gonna retweet your hate. Get her! Get her! That's inciting targeted harassment right there. Under Twitter's own rules, Leslie Jones should have her account terminated. She did the precise thing that Milo was wrongly banned for. She openly incited the targeted harassment of another Twitter user, not to mention engaging in routine, casual racism. But Twitter's a private company. It can refuse service to anyone it likes. Oh really? So can Christian bakeries refuse service to gays? Oh no, that's right, they get fined and shut down. But that has nothing to do with it. You're talking about discrimination law. Except that law isn't applied when it comes to Muslim bakeries refusing to bake gay wedding cakes. Just like Twitter's own rules aren't applied to leftists who engage in violent rhetoric or who incite targeted harassment. Do you know how many threats of violence and outright death threats I've personally reported to Twitter only to see nothing happen every time. So while Twitter was wasting its time and resources on censoring a gay conservative who gave a movie a bad review, ISIS supporters were celebrating terrorist attacks. An actual ISIS jihadist was allowed to threaten terror on Twitter for six months and they did nothing. Over the last two years, Black Lives Matter supporters have called for killing police officers on a daily basis. Those threats intensified after the murder of five cops in Dallas. How did Twitter respond? It gave them their own emoji. So I guess under these new rules, prominent Twitter users with hundreds of thousands of followers are now personally responsible for racist and violent tweets sent by their followers. Does that mean D. Ray McKesson or Sean King will be held personally responsible for the deluge of violent threats and incitements to kill cops tweeted by Black Lives Matter supporters? Does that mean apologists for radical Islam like Glenn Greenwald will be held personally responsible for ISIS propaganda or death threats sent to conservatives by Islamists. Is Justin Bieber responsible when his fans cut themselves with the hashtag cut for Bieber? Is Beyonce responsible when her fans go after One Directioners with death threats and rape threats? Of course not. It's preposterous to suggest that a public figure, an entertainment personality, or a prominent journalist is responsible for what other people post on the internet. Does that mean feminists like Anita Sarkeesian, or social justice warriors in general, will be held personally responsible for the mob witch hunts that ruin people's lives and destroy their careers on a regular basis? No, they won't, because Twitter's arbitrary, punitive rules are only enforced against conservatives. Because Twitter is bankrolled by Saudi Arabia and controlled by extreme left-wing, free speech-hating hypocrites. It's also riddled with regressive leftists who patrol their safe space by demanding anyone who has a different opinion be silenced. Because censorship is so progressive! Yeah, you're all for diversity, but when it comes to diversity of opinion, not so much. Some of them actually think that merely retweeting their idiocy is harassment. That's the new standard for cyberbullying. Harassment is 
uh, threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar, you suck. Twitter is now a privately owned public commons. Twitter and Facebook are working with governments to hunt down thought criminals. What's next? Are you going to ban people from using the internet altogether if they trigger your bot hurt? You know, Twitter is a private company. It's entitled to do what it likes. The problem is it's lying to users. Jack Dorsey says that it's the free speech wing of the free, you know, free speech platform, the free speech wing of the free speech party, that he wants it to be a utility like water, that Twitter is the place you go if you want to express yourself. That's a lie. There is a systematic campaign against conservative and libertarian points of view on Twitter. In the ultimate equation, when future generations look back on this critical juncture, in the fight for liberal Western ideals of free expression, the judgment will be damning. Twitter, Jack Dorsey, you were on the wrong side of history.